I'm going to share something with you. That might put me in a very negative light, yeah. Relationships are not my forte. You see if someone grabbed up my wife and saying, completely different ball game. I'll walk away from it and this has been like a therapy session. Andrew McCart, IFL TV, proudly sponsored by Everlast. I'm here with the nightmare himself, Nathaniel Collins. Nathaniel, what's happening, mate? You good? How are we? Good, all good? Good, mate. Yeah, yeah, I'm good. Listen, well, let's just jump straight into the, the deep end with it. You've got a great fight ahead of you coming up against James Beach Jr. Um, in a division that's stacked with talent, UK, domestically, internationally. Uh, yeah, your thoughts on the fight itself? Yeah, good fight. Um, obviously, I was meant to fight uh, Raza Hamza, mm -hmm. um, which was mandated by the board. And then James Beach came in and caused the upset. And he's obviously took his spot over. So I'm looking forward to it. It's a, it's a good fight. I watched their fight, um, obviously, to see what was what and what was going to happen. So, yeah, it was good. That's what I mean. Right now, is it's has it been a frustrating time? For you, obviously, trying to get this British title fight over the line because it seems like you should have already fought for this maybe the tail end of last year. But the opportunity is here now. But has it been that sort of like a frustrating time between that Jacob Robinson fight and now because it was, what, May when you fought? Yeah. Uh, yeah, Jacob, so, um, yeah, has it been a frustrating time for you that you, you haven't got out sooner? Yeah, it's been the worst, honestly, like dragging in and dragging in and... You know, obviously, I was meant to fight Nick Ball for it. They wanted to go a different direction, um, whatever. But that was meant to be in November. So I'd trained all the way through for that. And then um, it's like I've been told, oh, stay ready over Christmas because January or February might happen. And then it not being January or February, it being March, you know, and I'm missing, missed, like, holidays and stuff at the start of the year there with um, my missus and the kids. So it's just been one thing after the other. But now it's finally... And I just I'm I'm absolutely buzzing to to have it out there. That's what just going on that touching on what you just said there. Like I can remember uh you put a post up on Instagram that your your wife and you've just got a well maybe not a newborn now, but maybe a good few months, the six, seven months. Yeah, yeah uh, five months she is. Five month old baby there, and you, you put a post up saying uh, I can't go on my first holiday with my family because you're in training camp waiting for the date. Now that's the side of the, the the game, the sport that not many fans get to see. They just get to see what happens inside the ring. They don't see the prep behind you stepping through them ropes, which is you not going on your child, your babies and your, your wife's or your missus's first uh, holiday, which, again, there's a lot of sacrifice in this to win this British title for yourself. Yeah, for sure. Like, um, November was meant to be a good fight. Nick Ball, payday, mm -hmm. get a wage, you know. I hadn't fought since May. Now it'll be 10 months since my last fight and, you know, I've not got a wage from it. I'm scraping and scrimping on, you know, some sponsorship money and people helping me out that way. And then I've got things like the start of the year coming up, like my missus, her family paid for us to go away skiing and that's that's them taking a hit and stuff. So it's it's funny, like, people don't notice that and don't see it, but I'm 100% focused on the task ahead and that's why, you know, I'm I'm not happy to say, but I'm more than comfortable saying, listen, I can't go on holiday. I don't, I'm not bothered about Christmas. I'm not bothered about this and that. So, um, you know, the sacrifice has come. Now it's, this is what it's been for. So it's time to pay off. Well, that's it. It's, it's, it's what you've sort of hoped for. You've mentioned the Nick Ball fight coming through, then Hamza fight meant a bit. Now you've got James Beach, which is, again, a, a tough opponent in, its, in, in itself. So what type of fight are you expecting? Then obviously you've had a couple of opponent change. You've had a long layoff in terms of it will be, what, 10 months since you, your last fought since when uh, when you get into this ring against James. So, yeah, what kind of performance are you hoping for? What kind of opponent are you hoping for? Mate, I, I, I'm prepared for anything in front of me, obviously. I prepared for Nick, small, stocky, coming ahead. Uh, I prepared for Raza, tall, rangy. So, yeah. James Beach is like a mixture of both, actually. He's come ahead with still a bit of height and stuff on him. So, um Mate, I'm not bothered, like, see if I want to go out there and I want to put on a masterclass the same way I did against Jacob Robinson, that can happen. And if I want to go out there and put on a statement, that can happen as well. Like, I'm more than confident. I train for every style. I'm strong. I'm fit. Like, I live and breathe the game. So, um, I'm really looking forward to it. I'm really looking forward to it because it's been a long time coming and 
I'm just desperate to fight. And now, now I'm not bothered about wages or nothing. I'm not bothered. I just want to get in the ring now. It's been too long. Well, I need it. to remind well, people. I need to remind people who I am, you know. Well, you mentioned the Nick Ball fight. Now, Nick Ball's obviously, he's up there in that featherweight division as well and an exciting fighter, a very, very excited fighter who's got two great wins last year against Isaac Lowe and the, the tough Mexican there who flew over, over late. Um, that would have been a great fight. So that being said, when you look at this, all going well March 10th, you look at the featherweight division. Now, I've said on numerous interviews that the featherweight division for me is my favourite division. I absolutely love the featherweight division right now and because... The, the world champions seem to just be passing. The, the, they're fighting each other. The, the swapping belts. There's probably been about 10 or 12 different world champions in the featherweight division in the last two to three years. Um, I might be exaggerating a little bit, but you know what I mean? <laughs> there has been... Ah, it's been like, crazy. Josh Warrington, Kiko, Kid Galahad, Ray Vargas, Mark McZio, Guy Russell Jr., Lee Wood, Kanzu. Do you know what I mean? So it's, it's a division where all the champions are fighting each other. You're not scared to put your own on the line. And for you, Nathaniel, is you're undefeated. You'll have the British and Commonwealth title all going well March 10th. How long before we see you in the mix? Maybe not fighting these guys, but in the mix, your name almost being mentioned by them. Well, uh, I was talking to Joe and Sam about this, and I says, because I've seen Kiko gave up his EBU mm -hmm. um, title, and there was two Italians fighting for it, and I think they fought to a draw. So... I don't know what's happening with that European now, but ideally I'd like to, you know, everything going well on 10th of March, win this, and then I just want to press on and get the European, you know. Um, Lee done it recently down at Bantam. He just went Commonwealth European, British Commonwealth European, Traditional. you know. So mm. Exactly. I, I'd rather just go straight like that. I've got the Commonwealth, get the British, move on to the European, hopefully get a big fight. I've seen the guys even go out to Italy for it, you know. Um, win that, and then your name's properly in the mix. Um, Jazza Dickens holds the IBO world title. Um, James Beach Jr. just won the IBO Intercontinental. So if that's on the line, that puts you in the line for that. Um, I reckon Mick Conlon's probably going to be fighting for a world title against the guy that bet Josh Lopez. Warrington. Yeah, Lopez. Um, yeah. So I, I assume that's happening with them both being top rank. Uh, Lee Woods fighting Lara. So there's plenty of, you know fights going about there. So all it takes is any one of them to pull out or anything to go, you know, tits up and you're the British champion. So you're an easy name to pick. Yeah? Same as what happened to Lee Wood. So looking forward to it. Well, that's the thing, Nathaniel, but it's, it's like boxing's a crazy old sport. We've seen guys that are in that 15, 60, you know, um, ranking or uh, they've got that sort of 60, you know, and then they go on to fight for these world honours because the champions are looking for the opponent. There has been an injury to the mandatory or whatnot, so they're looking for the voluntary. They look down the rankings and they say, well, he's highly ranked. Bring him over. So the opportunities can be there in four or five fights' time. I know you're fully focused on March 10th, but you're still a human being. There's still maybe still a part of you when you're sitting having a cup of coffee in the morning thinking to yourself, man, this time next year, if I win four or five more fights, I could be... And amongst the names that you just mentioned there, Jazza Dickens, McConnell, Lee Wood, Josh Warrington, have you thought about that? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, that's all I think about because I'm not getting paid enough right now. <laughs> I want to be up there getting paid. So, you know, if it was if it came down a year or two down the line and I wasn't up there, I probably wouldn't do it anymore because it's mm. it's too hard. It's too like what are you getting out of it if you're not up there with them names? That's what you're doing it for. I've been doing it for ten years, so that's where I want to be, and that's where I will be after. You know, I get get this out of the way. Well, you mentioned there, like I mentioned about the featherweight division, it seems like it doesn't matter if you lose. If you make a good account of yourself, right, you put on a great show against these guys at the top, you'll get another guy at the top. It's, I, that's why the featherweight division for me right now is my feather, is my favourite division is because you're all fighting each other. You're not caring. Mick Conn and Lee Wood fought each other. Mick Conn's looking yeah. to get Robert Lopez now. Lee Wood's fighting Lara, who we, we know who beat Josh Wongton, stopped Josh Wongton out. So that's a tough fight. Lee Wood isn't scared to lose his world title against an absolutely monster Mexican coming over. Kiko Martinez seems to be upsetting a lot of these British guys right now. He's lost some, he's won some. Jordan Gill's the latest one. Um, so it doesn't matter. You need to get, once you get yourself into that position, I mean, it's going to be fun time. Well, fun time for me watching. I don't know if it's going to be a fun time for you fighting. <laughs> It'll be a fun time for me fighting, don't worry. It's not Good. going to be a fun time for anybody else. 
Yeah, I see, that's the right attitude, Nathaniel. But just going back to, to March 10th then, because you obviously, clearly, you and Joe, and Joe will probably, if he's listening to this interview, probably be pissed off that I'm talking ahead of March 10th. But, yeah, March 10th, uh, what are we what are we expecting from you? Is there frustrating? Is there sort of like, I'm going to take it out on James Beach because you have missed that opportunity, the family holiday with you. So there has a little bit of that pent-up aggression. So is this going to be an absolute statement come March 10th? Yeah, for sure, for sure. I'm just looking forward to getting out. Um, you need to. I need to win dramatically because it puts the rest of the division on notice. It's mm. hard. I need to win dramatically, so that's my full intention. Although I normally I always go out to try and stop people. <laughs> well, you've been doing it of late. You've had some good stoppages of late. It's not like yeah, you're, you're not stopping them. I mean, Jacob was. Uh, he's got a great skill set, so to stop somebody like Jacob might have been a a little bit hard because he does have that sort of same skill set as you. So. He, he does know how he does know how to evade punches, even though you did knock him down, yeah. I believe, in the ninth or tenth round. I can't quite remember. Um, yeah, so you have been knocking him down, Nathaniel. So it's not like you you you, you can't stop them. Yeah, that's what I'll be going for. Don't worry about it. <laughs> yeah, good stuff. Listen, mate, I know you're, you're training hard. Um, so one final word: Have you got a message for James Beach come March tenth? Uh, yes, mate. Just be prepared. The nightmare's coming. There you go. Listen, I know you're training hard, mate. You've just done a strength and conditioning. There's a boxing ring behind you. No doubt you'll be doing some pad works with Joe, some sparring later. So, listen, keep training hard, mate. And uh, I might see you March 10th, okay? So, keep training hard, buddy. Thank you, mate. Brilliant. Thank you. Thank you, mate. Cheers. Cheers. Bye-bye. I'm going to share something with you. That might put me in a very negative light, yeah. Relationships are not my forte. You see if someone grabbed up my wife and saying, completely different ballgame. I'll walk away from here and this has been like a therapy session.